Happy Friday, y'all, while there's still two minutes in a Friday or hello weekend. So I am here with a week in review of what's going on in politics. But before I want to get in and hello to everybody that come on, I would like to thank everybody for your phone calls, for your text messages and for your messages online. It's been a struggle just, you know, dealing with mental health. I have done deal with mental health for so long since I was a kid. I said 20 years, but really since I was a kid. And so it's something I've been battling for like close to like 25, almost really almost 30 years. So it's been tough. And there's days where I just want to give up and just want to end my life. But if it wasn't for family, if it wasn't for friends that called, I would not know what I do. I felt like I was at the stage where I was in 2019 when I lost my permanent job. So it's been a struggle since. But I just want to thank everybody for your phone calls and for your text messages and for your messages online. I appreciate it so much. And I am needed here and I want it here. And um, it was a array of things from my personal life and then, you know, getting excited and to actually canvas for a candidate and the candidate that I wanted to canvas for, you know, dropped out of the race and which is sad, but she is running for her reelection of her position. Again, some people discourage me of saying, why would you support that kind of candidate? But it's just like, how are you triggering me? But anyway, anyway, as I said from before, I appreciate everybody's messages and I, I just appreciate Everybody that follows me on the internet and in real life, I just appreciate it. I had my close friends call me. One of my friend's sisters checked on me. And then one of my sister's friends checked on me. And my eldest sister came by. So I'm really, really thankful for everyone and their and their phone calls and their, you know, regard to me. But in the meantime, let's get down to business, right? So I won't be long before you. Sound like I'm in church. I won't be long before you. So, um, we have COVID cases. You know, I always start off with COVID because COVID is, is still is still in our midst. Some people think it's not in our midst, but it's really in our midst. It's still here. It's not going away any freaking time soon. So, according to the COVID cases around the world, thank you, Jar. So, COVID cases around the world... We have 269,168,292 cases of COVID-19 around the world. Global death toll is at 5,295,491. U.S. confirmed cases are as follows. 49,833,439. Yikes. And the U.S. death toll is 796,762. So again, for those who have came in, the uh, global confirmed cases of COVID-19 are at 269,168,292 cases, confirmed cases of COVID-19. The U.S. death toll, I mean, excuse me, the global death toll is 5,295,491. The U.S. confirmed cases are at 49,833,439, and the U.S. death toll is 796,762. And as for vaccinations, over uh, 1 million, 1.8 1, 1. Over 1. 8 million people are vaccinated, but the actual number is 1,855,000,000, which is 200 and 200.7 million people in the United States are vaccinated. So 61% of our population is vaccinated. So with all of that being said, as I said this, Omicron is here. Omicron is here. It's not going away. It's here to stay, unfortunately, until people, you know, hunker down. Now for New York... I believe there is, um, I don't know if it starts this week coming on the 14th or it starts somehow kids from 5 to 11, they had to have one dose of the vaccine in order to eat at a restaurant, which is fair enough, which 
I think it should be fully vaccinated, like the adults, but who am I? So, you still got people getting mad that kids got to be vaccinated to go to certain places or kids are, are getting the vaccine. And you still got people still spreading misinformation. Even some folks that follow me that's spreading misinformation online, basically on Instagram, even on Twitter. So, all the stuff I listed with nearly 50 million cases of COVID, because we have 49.8 mil, with almost 800,000 people dead from this virus, there are still folks still spreading misinformation. So, for you people to continuously spread misinformation as thousands of people are dying from COVID-19. I hope you know that you're doing a disservice and that you're really fucking stupid. I am so sick and so tired of people who even follow me, continuously spread misinformation about not just the virus, but about the vaccine. And not just because I took it, but science actually works. If it wasn't for science, none of us would be alive today. The vitamins and the herbs you're taking, that's science. When you go to the doctor, that's science. And I'm not a science person. But to all of you folks out there that continuously spread misinformation about COVID-19 and the vaccine, you will F around, get sick, or die. This is wave five. This is wave five of COVID-19. We're almost two years in. For China, it's already two years. For America, it's the 21st month of this. So it will be March will make it two years since we call this a state of emergency. Well, the dummy, the bum call it a state of emergency. So continue to keep doing the crap that you're doing, spreading misinformation about the virus and the vaccine. You will F around and find out. Yeah, I'm a millennial too, um, um, Leah. I'm 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 a '86 baby. I mean, the, the for the life of me, for the life of me. I mean, science saved my life. My eye was saved because I had optical neuritis in my left eye. Also, I had something underneath my buttocks that was saved. I mean, I mean the 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 stupidness of this. Spreading misinformation. Are you dumb? Are you dumb? Or stupid? Thank you, Arike. Thank you so much. But, to, to I mean, spreading misinformation is ridiculous. Herbs and, 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 and uh, what is it? And supplements is not going to save you. What's going to save you from COVID? Besides taking a vaccine, is wearing a goddamn mask. And social distance. Because some of y'all have been slacking on that social distancing. You continue to keep gathering so much and with no mask and not vaccinated. You will F around and die. Get sick and die. Like, there's no way to put it. There's no way to put it. But off from the, the COVID stuff, I would like to draw your attention to the Build Back Better agenda, which is still being held up in the Senate. Don't know when they're going to vote for it. They're supposed to vote for it like around the 15th or something like that. I mean, at this point, they just need to, Democrats just need to do what they need to do. Vote for the bill. Not trying to, you know, dream of an imaginary bipartisanship. Joseph Manchin III. Still, like, we need to do things in a bipartisan way. That shit died. That shit died almost 10 years ago when President Obama came in office. People showed their ass. 
Even people in the Democratic Party. That's why the Democrats lost a lot of seats. Because they showed their ass. Save the coal jobs. Yeah, you lost your goddamn job. But. They just need to go vote for this bill. This bill is popular. The framework is there. I'm not going to look up the framework. Because I, I read the framework. But there's a lot of money going into child care. There's a lot of money going into, you know, insulin. Instead of paying $1,000 for your insulin, you're paying thirty five dollars a month for your insulin that is a huge drop Kristen cinema i mean kirsten cinema so uh i mean just overall with the build back better agenda the build back better agenda is popular it's popular amongst democrats independents and even republicans like a good fraction like a good 60 something percent of republicans actually like build back better agenda so i don't know what's the issue with the price tag the price tag was originally three point five trillion, and it was reduced by one point seven five trillion. That is still a big package, and it still helps the everyday Americans so they can save money in their pockets. So I'm a need for Joseph Manchin III and Kirsten Leah Cinema to cut their bullshit, vote with their party, get that bill back to the House so they can send it right to the president's desk. Because at this point, people are struggling. People are starving still. Even though things are picking up, but people are still struggling. There is a systemic issue. And I'm in need for y'all to understand that. So please, pass this bill. This bill is important. The president wants it on his desk. He's been telling y'all to put that on his desk. And y'all need to put the voting rights bill on his desk and the George Floyd, George Floyd Justice Policing Act on his desk. He's waiting for that. He's waiting for that. And y'all arguing about policy difference. At this point, it's about life and death. The president got other shit to do. He wants to sign those bills so he can keep signing other legislation that's part of his agenda. Point blank, period. And to the SCOTUS, so you know the abortion thing um, from my news alert. I don't know if it's still there, but I'm about to pull it up. Uh, where is it? I don't know if it went away on my phone, but um, the SCOTUS is... Basically ignoring the Texas abortion six-week ban thing. I'm not surprised about um, the SCOTUS 6-3 conservative majority. This is what happens when you don't vote. Elections have consequences. You had a bum that read on the sixth grade level elected as the leader of the free world. That bum and the Republican Party... The Grand Old Party, the Grand Insurrectionist Party, the GIP, confirmed three judges, two were stolen seats, and one was a whole ass criminal and a sexual assaulter. And they passed a ridiculous, besides passing a ridiculous tax bill that's costing the country now, um... You have a conservative majority and conservative judges. So, therefore, elections have consequences. This is what happens when your dumbass don't go out and vote. Vote their party or vote for a bum. So, all you pink pussy wearing hat ass chicks and all you bro socialists. And you dirtbag rednecks and step for wives. This is all on y'all. This is all on y'all. This is y'all fault. Y'all did this to us. So your rights taken away. All your other stuff taken away. It's y'all fault. I blame y'all. Yeah, 
yeah, GIP. And the sex offender bum, Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh's a whole sex offender. Like, like he looked like it. Ugh. And for people getting mad at the president, he needs to expand the court. He'll expand the court. But you motherfuckers should have voted in 2016. You didn't. So therefore, you got what you got. You should have voted for the, the lady. At least the lady would have listened to y'all dumbasses. And listened to your pie in the sky dreams. And she would have told y'all no. But she would listen to y'all. Donald Trump didn't want to listen to y'all. He exploited y'all. That's what he did. Should have listened to um my former senator. A.K.A. the Secretary of State. You should have listened to her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now these midterms and these races, I'm on the roll here. I'm almost towards the end. So these midterms is going to be crazy. Um, Republicans will try every book in the the in the world to cheat because they realize the American people are not conservative. I mean, the American people was not siding with Republican ideology for many years. Not most. Now they see like the country's becoming more browner, more darker. And they're voting for the party of the people, which is the Democratic Party. Versus the Republican Party, the GIP, the Grand Insurrectionist Party. No. No. So they're trying every dirty book in the trick. So that's why you got to get out and vote. See, people don't vote in primaries. They don't vote in midterms. This is what the, the, the elections that people don't like to vote in. And this is how you get rat fuckers like the Grand Insurrectionist Party. And some dumbass Democrat in the middle of the road who wants to cater to the middle, the middle of the road. That's what you get. So therefore, it's, you should vote in your, your um, elections. If your senator's up, you need to vote. If your congressional people, they're up every two years, you need to vote. And other municipal elections, if, if this is your municipal election year. And as for, I want to address something about my state really quick. And I'm not going to be long winded. Y'all know part of me being depressed, besides like my personal issues, I was very upset with, you know, my AG bowing out. But I understood why. I reflected and understood why she bowed out because, you know, all the cases that she got on her desk were important. So I get it. But um, the simple fact is now we you basically or you don't have like a array of choice because everybody aligned differently. With their politics. My politics are more like pragmatic progressive side lately. But I don't label myself as such. But I'm more to the left on my stuff than to the center and right. Even though I'm pragmatic. But my policy ideals is very progressive. Like I'm for canceling student loan debt. Please do. Because I got almost. I got in the 70s. Um, please. Um, healthcare. Which healthcare is being expanded, universal healthcare. I am for universal based income. I am for that. I am for all of that stuff. I just don't want no dirty ass white man that only has two years of experience to deliver it to me. I don't want to hear it from you. I'm for reparations, but I don't want to hear no ashy ass motherfucker who don't know shit touting that. I will not side with that. I'm siding with people that actually has record. Of helping my people. And that's why I was supporting my AG for governor. Because she actually got record of helping people with housing. And you know civil suits and shit. So you know. And I actually met her in person twice. So I mean. And it was a pleasant exchange. She was very nice. She's tall. So that's what I'm just saying. Like it was good. But you know. um, I'm just. I was hurt. But I feel better now. But some parts of me is like, I'm still hurt. And I said it before, and people are going to get mad. I'm not supporting none of the three candidates. I will vote whoever I feel like I vote, but I will vote with my... I will vote, but doesn't mean I'll be excited about you. But I'll vote because I want, an, I want leadership. And I'd rather have leadership than have an insurrectionist and a dumbass 
on the Republican side. And it's a dumbass and an insurrectionist vote running on the Republican side. That's how bad the Republican Party is in New York. But thanks to Rudy Giuliani. But anyway, yes, yeah, so that's why I'm supporting my AG. I will still continue to support my AG for every election. And I'll probably will canvas for uh, myself and... I'm I'm actually following the press secretary and she's going to let me know when the next rally is. So I'll attend. So I will attend that and I'll probably donate to her or probably fundraise for her. But that's the only person I'm fundraising for. I love Stacey, Stacey Abrams. But I'm not from Georgia. So I, 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 I butt out. So my cousins are going to vote for Stacey because they talk about voting for Stacey because I got like three or four of my cousins that live in Georgia. So, yeah. But now I'm going to read people. I'm on a roll here. It's only 12.19. I started like at 11.58. So. I got to pull up my iPad. On this one. Because. um, This one. She done it again. Margaret Ellen Noonan. Margaret Ellen Noonan, also known as Peggy Newton, Noonan. She was the primary speech writer and special assistant to Ronald Wilson Reagan from 1984 to 1986. Wrote an article about... Vice President Kamala Davy Harris. And it's titled Kamala Harris no, Kamala Harris's shaky standing is a danger to the country given the position she called to No, I'm going to read that title again. Kamala Harris Kamala Harris's shaky standing is a danger to the country given the position she could be called on to fill, right? Peggy Noonan. So Margaret wrote some stuff in here. Took screenshots. And one of them seems very interesting for Margaret. So Margaret said, President Biden's poll numbers are bad and Vice President Kamala Harris's are worse. A survey this week from conservative-leaning um, poll, Ramison had her at 39% favorable, 57% unfavorable. The number that stuck in the public mind came last month from the U.S. Today Suffolk poll that put her at 28% and disapproval at 51. The past few weeks, she was named hammered by, she's been hammered by bad news. There's an exodus of high level staffers. The Washington Post had a sweeping Sneering piece that described as dysfunctional and chaotic office full of bitter enemies. A consistent problem is Miss Harris's refuses to weigh into briefing materials prepared by staffers and would then berate employees when she appeared unprepared. A former staffer, she said, was not willing to do the prep work. I'm assuming that's the guy that stayed there for like five months and shit. Yeah, no, in fact, ass motherfucker. But then she said some bullshit like this. Where is it? She seemed unprepared, unfocused, and unserious. Her supporters growls, growls that she's criticized because she is a woman of color. Axios Jonathan Swan op Quoted some in August, they seem sexist, overtone, and gender dynamics in the press coverage. This was echoed this week in the Washington Post piece. Her defenders say criticism is steeped in racism and sexism. She faces a double standard for a woman who are for women who are ambitious, powerful, and simply unafraid to appear. She doesn't seem strong in public. She seems scattered and unprepared. Mr. Duran the non-fact-ass dude, an examiner 
what prejudice there is baked into our politics and a competent politician that doesn't blame bigotry but beats it up. Her real problems look more like this. She loves politics of politics too much and not the meaning. When people meet with her, they come away saying that she cares about it I care about is politics of the issue, not the issue itself. But even as she's obsessed with the game of national politics, she's not so far particularly good at it. When she sought the uh, the Democratic presidential nomination in 2020, she spectacularly flamed out. I'm sorry if I'm botching up, but I'm, I'm about to tear into Margaret's ass. She came from a generation of California Democrats who never even had to meet a Republican so great was their electric dynamic di dominance. It was too easy for them. She had to speak Democrat and only to know how they think and put party coalitions together. <sighs> Margaret. You have a lot of nerve to criticize a competent vice president. A whole lot of nerve. But then again, you're a conservative woman. So you don't know what um, a competent woman looks like or never really work with one. I mean, after all, you work for a man who had Alzheimer's early stages of dementia and was senile and old because you did criticize the current president being old when your boss was old and did not know where he was and that his wife had to put him back in place. You worked for also a competent, incompetent, excuse me, vice president who didn't even know from his head, from his ass. So with all of that being said, Margaret, you have no room to talk about Vice President Kamala Harris. It's Vice President Kamala Harris. If you can't say that, say Madam Vice President or just don't say nothing at all. So I would like for you, Margaret, to do, I, I, I want you at 71 years old. Live your life. Retire. Go on vacation somewhere. And stop writing. Because your articles are garbage. And you are ancient as a dinosaur. Even a dinosaur has more life than you do. So I'm going to say this again so I can have the edit so I don't get kicked off of Twitter because, you know, they be kicking everybody off and shit. Margaret, you worked for an incompetent president who was senile, damn near, dementia, early stages of dementia and early stages of Alzheimer's. Go ask Ron Jr. You also worked for an incompetent vice president who didn't even know his head from his ass. You worked for one of the worst Republican administrations ever since Eisenhower before Donald Trump. Your boss was so racist that he didn't even go to the hood that much because something would have been thrown at him. So I want Margaret, you, for you, at 71 years old, I want you to retire, focus on your life, and just stop writing articles altogether. Because they're garbage and they're trash. So please, Margaret, go somewhere off the sunset and stop tweeting and stop writing. I mean, for... The audacity of Margaret, right? 
We still remember the frivolous and 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 and, and stupid the the, the 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 article she called the vice president frivolous and got dragged by her own white sisters Nicole and Claire. Claire done dragged that ass to filth. Claire Claire was like tag me in Nicole. Because how dare you? How dare you? You work for one of the most egregious and worst and Republican administrations ever. Girl, your man was afraid to say AIDS. Who's afraid to say AIDS? He didn't do nothing but the crimes. All in American cities. It's a state's problem. He didn't even know his head from his ass neither. I mean, Nancy had to get them all together. Probably wearing adult diapers in the White House. You want to talk about old? That man was old. Versus, I, I mean, our current president. And thank you for reminding me, Yvonne. Oh my God, thank you, Yvonne. I want, this is a public service announcement. I want Maureen Dow and Margaret Noonan to keep the vice president's name out your mouths. Keep the first African-American president's name out your mouth. And even keep Joe Biden, President Joe Biden's name out your mouth. You guys are the worst conservative writers next to Bill Crystal and Charlie Sykes. And I don't even care for them. So I want you two old hags to just shh and stop writing and go somewhere and enjoy your life. And stop being wrecked and pressed as you are. Like, oh my God. Like, oh. I mean, we're still affected by 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 uh, Reaganomics, trickle down economics. Maybe he's the greatest thing next to sliced cheese. Give me a break. Give me a break. Now, see, Ooh. Sarah Jones. Oh, Sarah, gotta read that title. I don't want to be an hour on here because I do want to put my video on what you call it, but. Sarah, Sarah Jones had the, the damn audacity so Sarah Jones had an article titled the once future president is reduced to shilling self-help videos Sarah, y'all know who Sarah Jones is? Sarah knew, like, no one did not know who you were until you wrote that, that, that misogynistic article. And then we found pictures of you. My good bro found pictures of you. You're not that cute. You got craters in your face and you keep wearing that pharmacy makeup. Stop wearing that CVS and Walgreens makeup, boo. You write for um, the New York Magazine. You can afford some Mac. You can afford some Sephora. And if you can't afford that, you can go in TJ Maxx and buy it. Because you need it. And you need to curl your hair and, and use some conditioner. Okay? I'm going to need for you to stop using that pharmacy makeup. Okay? Because you coming for Hillary Clinton and you look like that, you need to stop. Stop wearing that pharmacy makeup. And write some better shit. My me belly. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Don't come for the pharmacy. Dr. C. She makes too much money to be wearing pharmacy makeup. She makes more money than you and I both. Come on. She wears that pharmacy makeup and, and, and you talking shit about Hillary Clinton and you wearing pharmacy makeup. Not even wet and wild. She wearing some 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 shit some what is it elf she wearing elf yeah the difference is uh, uh doctor see you got mac she ain't got no fucking mac i got on mac right now i got on mac and if you're gonna wear pharmacy makeup wear some cover girl wear some maybelline wear some ramel not wet and wild and and, and all that other cheap shit that that elf shit get the fuck out of here son
Maybelline or L'Oreal, some, some. Not Elf and, and Wet and Wild and all that other new shit. Even with burnt bees if they did makeup. Get the f yo. And then you have the New York State Democratic Chair himself. Hmm. Had the audacity to say this. I think it, it then leads you to the question, is it always a requirement of a Democratic elected official or perhaps the state chair or party chairs? Is it a requirement that if someone wins the Democratic primary, they must always get the Democratic uh, endorsement of these people? Um, and and that, that's a question I would answer. No, it's, it's not. Look, let's take a, a scenario uh, very different. Where David Duke, you remember him, the Grand Wizard of the KKK? He moves to New York, he becomes a Democrat, and he runs for mayor in the city of Rochester, which has a low primary turnout, and he wins the Democratic line. I have to endorse David Duke? I don't think so. Now, of course, India Walton isn't in the same category, but it just, it just leads you to that question, is it a must? It's not a must. Um, it's something you choose to do. That's why it's an endorsement. Other, otherwise, they'd call it something else, like a requirement. Y'all heard that, right? I'll post it on there. So. This is how he looked like. A hot mess, right? Jay Jacobs. From Nassau County, Long Island. How fucking dare you compare a black woman to the grand wizard of the KKK? Now keep in mind, I don't agree with India Walton's politics. I'm a... New, I'm a Metro New Yorker. She's an upstate New Yorker. I don't agree with her politics or socialism. However, comparing her to the KKK is just, it's a, it's a, it's the lowest shit that you can ever do. But leave it to J.S. Jacobs to do that shit. Right? And also, Quiet as it kept, he is behind of why A.G. James dropped out the race and telling people like Jemani Williams and Tom Swazi, even though those two have no business in the race, to drop out as well to clear the path for Kathy Hochul. And this is no disrespect to Kathy, but if Kathy wants the votes of the base of the Democratic Party, which is black people, especially black women, she needs to earn our vote by going in our communities and saying what she's going to do and actually do what she's going to do for us. Because right now, I don't see it. It's the lack of transparency. But to Mr. Jacobs, this is for you. How dare you compare a black woman to the most racist man in our country? How dare you to tell black candidates to drop out the race to clear the path for the white woman or the white man? How dare you undermine primaries when primaries are healthy for the political process? But then again, you some job ass politician from trash ass Long Island. So I'm going to need for you, Mr. Jacobs, to one fix that hairline, you know, go to a dermatologist and fix your skin and resign. You need to go. You are a bad representation for New York Democrats. You are the dinosaur yesteryear for the Democratic Party. 
You're not the representation of today's Democratic Party. The today's Democrat electric, the whole entire party is people of color, black people, Latino people, AAPI people, and the LGBTQ plus community, not white men from trash ass Long Island like you. So please resign and go back to Long Island and live your best life because nobody wants to see you and nobody likes you. Your man is not like comparing a black woman to the most racist man that lynch people. Get the fuck out. What the fuck? Like how that how does that work? And I don't agree with India Walton's politics. I don't dislike her. I just don't agree with her politics. But you don't do that shit. And people will call it for his resignation. And people need to call for his resignation more because you 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 made the AG sign a pact, basically sign a pact to let her go. Cause poll numbers are, are not reliable. So you just wanted her to go to Clayton because you endorsed Kathy? Like, bitch, please. Oh my God. And to all New York white Democrats, this is especially for y'all. Y'all been cutting up for a very, very long time. Y'all not the base of the party. Y'all never was the base of the party. After 1964, y'all stopped being the base of the party. Because y'all really never was the base of the party. It was always black people. Black people are the base of the Democratic Party. We deliver elections. We deliver presidential elections. And also senator races, governor's races. All local elections. It's us. It ain't y'all. Y'all don't really have no stock. In democratic politics. Okay. Y'all don't. You guys are the worst. You guys are not allies. So y'all need to take that FBR. Y'all need to take that BLM. Yeah BLM. And y'all need to take. All them extra hashtags out your bio. Because you're not allies. You guys are fucking bigots. And yes. I said what I said. So if you have a problem, you can unfollow, you can block, you can mute, whatever. I said what I said. Y'all are not the base of the Democratic Party. It's people like me. I deliver. So you can take your ass somewhere else because guess what? You guys are not the base. And we never needed y'all. But I'm wrapping this up because it's about to go down. Um, I would like to shout out to some people. Aunt Julie and, you know, Yvonne and Lee and Queen and my sis, Dr. C, Sky, all the other people that was watching. Thank you. Make sure y'all follow each other, which I all probably follow each other on on Twitter. I think I'm going to put out a list of people to recommend to follow so some of y'all can boost y'all following up, you know, because I am going to put a list out. So look out for that soon. But until then, folks, have your good weekend, happy holidays, whatever holiday you celebrate. And if you celebrated Hanukkah, I forgot what, happy Hanukkah. If you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. If you celebrate Kwanzaa, happy Kwanzaa. If you celebrate Advent, happy Advent, because religious folks celebrate Advent. Advent. And I think Pentecost, I think this is the season of Pentecost, I'm not sure. Um, and Three Kings, happy Three Kings pretty soon. So, till then, good night, y'all, and thank you for your kind words.